What's up, guys? Yesterday was Joe Biden's inauguration day uh, speech. It was full of love and compassion and sunshine and rainbows and so many good things in that speech. So many, so many good things. I cannot wait for all this stuff to start. I cannot wait. Oh, yeah, and there's another thing. Uh, turns out we're going to get into a, a uh, war right now. There's going to be a war on uh, white supremacy. So, uh, that was in that speech, too. Apparently, we are overrun by white supremacists. Everywhere. Under every rock. Under, uh, I mean, literally, it's according to Biden and his administration, white supremacy is the number one problem in this country. The number one problem in this country. So, there's that. And uh, what else? What other good things did he talk about? Well, yeah, he talked about unity. He talked about bringing the tone down a little bit. And then the very next sentence was white supremacy. And you know, I would be all for getting rid of any supremacy. White supremacy, black supremacy, brown supremacy. I don't care. Any supremacy. It doesn't really matter to me. Because I don't believe in any form of racial supremacy. I think it's shitty. I think people that practice in that <clears throat> are ignorant. And and that's it. It's that simple. Ignorance brings out racial supremacy. But the problem with what he's fighting is not what I'm talking about. He's fighting what the left considers white supremacy. And that has nothing to do with what everybody thinks the word means. You see, in their definition of white supremacy, their definition is anyone that doesn't agree with us, anyone that thinks that this country is exceptional, is labeled a white supremacist. You don't believe me? Go check. Anyone who thinks the 4th of July is a holiday is a white supremacist. Anyone that thinks that we are one human race is a white supremacist. Because these people are ungodly, you know. They don't believe in a higher authority, a higher calling. They don't believe in that. So they find, they find a boogeyman that they could attach themselves to, like a cancer. That's why I always equated the uh, Democratic Party and progressives as a cancer. And there is no such thing as a good cancer. Just like there's no such thing as a good progressive. Because they take over society with their warped, twisted minds and they don't realize that other people can have different thoughts. So, Joe Biden being a dumb, ignorant shell of a person that he is, he's just going to go along with the progressive movement because they took over like a cancer. They took over his party. And now we're going to see some fun stuff. The brainwashing already started. And that's... You know, I fault Trump in that. Because... He's, he would be a perfect person... 
to stop this this nonsense that was happening in our schools. Because this all starts in the education level. You understand? People just don't wake up and be disgusting, evil human beings like progressives are. It takes time to develop it. It's a brainwashing technique. They start young. They tell the kids that America is not a good country. It was terrible. This country was built on racism and slavery and we never accomplished anything good. But somehow they're gonna repair everything. Mind you, their ideology never did anything good, ever. Ever, because they can't think long enough into the future to see that their policies that they're trying to enact is detrimental to a society. And our media is also part of the same movement, so they don't push back. And that's how we're all labeled white supremacists. There, I solved all of humanity. You're welcome. No, I'm just kidding. So anyway, that's that's the problem. The definition of white supremacy is totally different. So this is going to bring more problems, obviously. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to realize what they're doing is pushing more and more people away. And by doing that, they're creating a larger foe that they could attack, which gives them more power. It's a vicious circle. It's basically they alienate more and more people. Those people don't want to think the same way as they do. Then the progressives call those people that they just alienated white supremacists. And they show everybody around them, look, there's more white supremacists. They hate us. They hate our way of life. They're going to destroy us. And there we are. So, this is not good. This is absolutely not good. And I blame the conservatives for not pushing back. I blame the conservatives for not standing up to this garbage. I blame the conservatives for for everything, basically. They had many opportunities to push back. Many, many. And they never did because they're terrified. of being called racist. So, this is the problem we have right now. And I don't see it getting better anytime soon because there's no pushback from anyone. We're just left alone trying to push back by ourselves without a larger voice. So I believe it's time for us to have a third party <clears throat> or primary the SOBs that are in office now. I, there's no other option because clearly the people that are in office now, the so-called conservatives, are too weak to do anything. And they're part of this, this ruling class that's secretly in bed with the progressives or with the Democrats, I should say, because progressives don't like anyone. So that's our only option. I don't see us uniting anytime soon. I think that's gonna be an impossible thing. Because as long as the media lies about a narrative as long as the media pushes some nonsense like they did with the Russian collusion and Jesus, so many other garbage lies and nobody's held accountable, nothing's going to change.
Nothing. So we got to stand up for ourselves. We got to stand up and fight. Make our voices heard. Primary the SOBs out of office. And take back the country that we believe is the best country in the world. And don't apologize for it. Stop apologizing for what you're doing. You don't have to go out and, uh, you know, guns are blazing. You don't have to be violent. Because they could use all of that against you. And they will. They don't care. They labeled a kid that was defending himself a white supremacist. Joe Biden did. That piece of garbage, empty husk of a person labeled a kid that he has no idea about a white supremacist. He doesn't know this kid from a hole in a wall. He doesn't know what he stands for. He doesn't know his name. But he labeled him a white supremacist. I blame Trump for a lot of this nonsense. I do. Because he had opportunity after opportunity to, to stand up to this pressure, to stand up to this garbage and push back. But he never did. He never stood up for his own supporters, to be honest with you, which pisses me off too. He never did. Supporters were being attacked. People who were wearing red hats that said, make America great again, MAGA hats. They were being attacked left and right. Trump never came out and said anything about that. At least I never heard him say anything. These were his own supporters. But you see, the thing is, Republicans are spineless. They are. They're scared and spineless. So someone might have said to him that, yo, don't say anything about this kid that was wearing the MAGA hat. He could be a white supremacist or he might have been a racist. So if your own side thinks that you're somehow a white supremacist or a racist because you're supporting his movement, then what do you say about the leadership? That pisses me off. That upsets me greatly that he never came out and said anything about all those people that were being attacked because they were proud to wear an America Great Again hat. And don't tell me he never saw videos. Dude, he was on Twitter all the time commenting on everything he saw. And I'm sure people were sending him stuff too. And whenever he did comment on things, it was always in general in generalizations. It was, oh, there's uh, violence on the left. He wasn't prepared. He doesn't know his own movement. That's the problem. The people that were talking to him that had his ear didn't feed him good information. They fed him garbage because they were part of the problem. He could have fixed a lot of it before he left office. He could have fixed a lot of things wrong really fast before he left office. He wasn't even prepared on stage. Now you got people saying that the Proud Boys are a white supremacist organization? Are you stupid? Are you stupid? He wasn't even prepared to back up his problem with critical race theory. I mean, it's a simple, simple thing to do. Trump might have been great as a businessman. You know, I'm not complaining about his presidency. He was a great president. Four years of no wars. It was good. The economy was great. It was exactly where I wanted the country to go. We brought up, you know, our own energy. We were self-sufficient. We were number one. We were good. But stupid things like this, like critical race theory, is the actual brainwashing element that changes how we think about our country. That, that religion where you fight racism with more racism, but yet pretend that racism is bad, but be more racist. I mean, it's such a dumpster fire that, oh man, he could have done more. He could have done more at the, at the local, you know, the, the local level. But 
it's too late now. So let's see if he does anything when he's out of office. Let's see if he calls people out. But I don't know how that's going to happen when Twitter can literally snap their fingers and get him off Twitter. What I don't understand is, and maybe someone can answer this question, why did he never go on a different platform? Why did he always stay in Twitter? On Twitter, I'm sorry. Why? He had opportunities to get out and like everybody else. He knew that Twitter was a cesspool. He knew that Twitter was a leftist shithole. So why not go where your supporters are? I understand you want to be you, you, you don't want to you want to be with Americans. You're the president of all Americans. That's fine, but there are certain people that wanted him dead. You can't be the president of, of people that want you dead. Are you crazy? Anyway, just wanted to talk about Biden's inauguration speech. It was beautiful. On that note, have a great day.